Hello everyone. In tonight's video I'm going to tie this fly. And this fly is direct variation from my favorite caddis dry fly, CDC and elk. So this would be CDC and snowshoe. And I'm going to talk about a couple of things regarding snowshoe and how to tie it properly. Most durable, usually. Properly as well, how to get most buoyancy out of it. Considering that this is not a buoyant material, it's not like a foam that it, it has buoyancy in it, it's just something else that gives it buoyancy, so stay with me. Um, so because I was sort of criticized before uh, from uh, some viewers that I don't list my materials and they're completely right there, uh, I would like to list my materials now, but not in a word, like text form, but I'm gonna say it. So first material obviously is going to be a snowshoe rabbit foot, this one is by Hairline in dark dun color very good color because it's a good substitute for CDC thread I'm going to use this Semperfly Nano Silk 18 through 0 hook is size 14 um, I think 14 or 16 would be um, the most universal where I fish and just see what's the average size of caddis you're imitating and uh, use that kind of a size for your flies and finally I'm going to use CDC feather and CDC feather you cannot use just any it has to have some properties and usually it's the size and thickness of rachis that I'm after so thinner rachis will get uh, around your hook much easier it will wrap around your hook easier but then again if you don't have length which you usually don't have on feathers with thin rachis then you take larger feather with thicker rachis and as you can see it's quite thick here but I'm also going to remove just a couple of those barbs sticking away now after waxing my thread so I just have a piece of wax this is pure beeswax I got from a beekeeper Oops. so I just go two times through it, through it. I'll just start my fly in a regular fashion not reverse jam hitch because I want to attach my first material at the rear end of the hook now instead of cutting like so you just slice through the thread because it's much easier especially if you don't have uh, sharp scissors now first material is going to be CDC as I said and after I cover the whole shank to, pre to get more traction friction sorry between material and thread so in, instead of just putting on a bare hook shank the feather I want to put it between two layers of thread so one two loose wraps I'm, I, do, I don't like the only tension is tension of the bobbin holder here now when I have like super small amount of tips here I'll just uh, catch them and secure them well okay I can to flatten the thread a little bit just to keep it as a habit and keep the thread away from the eye of the hook a little bit now hackle pliers are there to help you wrap this feather and twist the thread twist the feather in a clockwise motion and then just wrap it around the hook shank because it's twisted clockwise it tends to jump towards the eye which can make some gaps between those wraps but that's okay because no, don't worry about that. If you uh, wrap it counterclockwise, those the 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 whole feather will tend to jump to the to my left, to your right, and it will make tighter wraps of these segments. It would be easier for you, but I don't want that. I want I don't want to twist every every once in a while the feather. But you can do that, obviously. It's not a problem. So if you counter spin the feather, in that case you need to. Uh, after each wrap you need to twist it a little bit more okay now when you got into those legs keep them away from the eye of the hook 
but keep them don't break them don't cut them keep them because they will give life to your fly and life is something that your fly will that will make your fly uh, more desirable to the fish now here I catch those barbs with one two relatively loose wraps and then keeping the tension you can notice that I'm holding the bobbin holder and bending a hook a little bit now one two one two three I need to cut it so that, that that's why I have those three wraps over here those are locking wraps I need to cut the excess barb over here now the reason why I'm using GSP is that this rake is here is relatively thick but hollow inside so by pressing GSP onto it it will actually cinch into the into the into the rakes it will squeeze into it and it will secure it better I'll just remove those three wraps and then add over this piece of rakes I will try to cover it uh, this can actually uh, cut your thread, so be careful about that. Okay, now I put the end of the rake is on the side here, so I have more wide surface over here. Now, as you can see, we got ourselves nice buggy looking body with a couple of legs going around, and now it's time to add final material its wings. And if you use the front part of it it's very coarse it's very oh, it's, it's only okay for larger flies if you ask me I like middle portion or back portion depending on the fly size it decreases the fly size as you go to the rear of the foot now cut a little clump and you can just do this and see whether it looks good or not and then if it looks good add just a couple of more hairs because you're going to remove uh, the under first so it will be actually thinner than you can see it right now I like to cut it all the way to the bone so that's just the way I like it and those hairs are a little bit shorter so that's another reason why I need to cut it like that I need length I need I need to be able to work with this this is very good dubbing for example for the fly called the usual I usually unless I want to tie that line I don't keep it I just throw it away so I'm removing the under fur here okay and you can just take away a couple of those guards but you don't need to because in the middle portion of the foot guard hairs are not so strong now align the tips more or less same as you would align elk or deer or whatever hair and then transfer to your other hand counter spin the thread so it cords becomes stronger and then jumps into your hand as well one two wraps and then cinch on it cinch on it cinch on it and then here two wraps and now I can proceed now I'll just whip finish by pushing the thread into the hair over here so locking the hair with a whip finish knot as you can see the hair is now up so I locked it in the whip finish now I'll do it one more time just for the to make it a bit stronger and I'm doing it with hand because yeah it's a little bit easier to do it by hand now that I got used to it the final touch would be to cut the thread and to cut the head over here if you don't have sharp scissors this can be very very painful action meaning that you will be cutting for many times like this with good scissors it's just like one or two snips now I wanted to say something about how much hair you should use as you can see I didn't use much because it's not individual hair that's buoyant it's the 
shape you can see it's wavy it's the shape of the hair that's that makes it buoyant it, it traps air bubbles inside so what happens if you have like very very dense you actually prevent it from from trapping more bubbles in this hair that's my like more sparse bubbles can be bigger and in this one bubbles are smaller smaller bubble carries less weight bigger bubble carries more weight that's the theory I have behind it so you probably heard less is more and this applies to snowshoe as well uh, streamers pheasant tails regular names whatever less is usually more so use less here CDC barbs are also helping buoyancy here so this is not like super high riding fly but it still rides very good uh, because you can apply some floatant on this regardless what whatever you have just apply it's not sensitive like CTC is it, it won't get matted it's, it's gonna float forever I usually don't put anything I just rinse it in water do this go all, all over it and then in a couple of false, false casts it will get the shape again and you can fish it so guys that would be it my favorite variation of a dry fly CDC and snowshoe. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next week.